At London Financial Studies, we focus exclusively on capital markets. Our programmes offer practical learning to professionals from all over the world. Today we're going to talk about the bilateral margin requirements, sometimes known as the uncleared or UMR for uncleared margin requirements. Um, and in particular, I'm going to focus on SIM, which is the, the big picture as far as the regulatory background goes, is that we have a number of regulatory mandates which have been implemented under Basel III and related aspects since the last financial crisis. So it's, of course, very well known that there are more capital charges, such as the CVA capital charge. So what are the requirements? The requirements really come in, in two forms. And the first applies to variation margin. Now, maybe it's worth having a short note about terminology. In bilateral OTC derivatives, we generally... Now, the second thing is initial margin. Now, as opposed to variation margin, this is more of a, a major change because it is very uncommon for anyone in the OTC derivatives market to post initial margin to each other. Uh, which is, of course, a concept that really only originated historically on an exchange and didn't uh, happen very often in bilateral markets. Now, that's not to say it doesn't probably some very obvious challenges of what I've just spoken about, which is, number one, there has to be a re renegotiation of collateral agreements between financial firms within the OTC. In trying to decide on a, an initial margin model for the bilateral market, a fairly obvious place to start might be uh, to look what central counterparties or CCPs do, because CCPs have obviously been clearing. So let's just pause there and see an example of how that's done. So this is what's known as a weighted sensitivity. Um, so my starting point is my net sensitivity to each risk factor. So that's how you aggregate within a single currency. Then we have to specify how you aggregate across currency. And I've given you all the formulas here. Essentially, it's very relatively easy to explain. Across currencies, you assume that there is a correlation. So finally, uh, in step five, I aggregate across the different risk um, classes. Now, that's um, a bit subtle. Um, and what's going on here is, although it's correct, what about the impact of initial margin and, and what about MVA? And I'm going to start with looking at um, the risk re reduction benefit that I mentioned early on. Many large derivatives users will need to conform to the uncleared margin requirements by 2020. This creates many challenges. So there is the... Re what are the charges or costs that can eventually be expected to be passed on to clients on a trade-by-trade -trade basis. How can banks more effectively hedge these exposures to reduce cost capital? Okay, so I think, very good question. I think not a very easy question. Um, so as I said earlier in my talk, uh, there are things like CVA, FVA, which are very easy and natural to pass on to clients because the client